Coming up on this semester's last edition of the News at Rider, Hillary Clinton captures a crucial win in Pennsylvania. And Senator Joseph Vitel meets with students to discuss the plans of, for New Jersey's health care. Stay tuned for the News at Rider. New Jersey Senator Joseph Vitale joins Ryder University in Swaggart Auditorium this past week to discuss the New Jersey plan for improving New Jersey's health care. Tina Grasso was there to get the story. You hear about a quarter of a million kids in New Jersey at about 1.3 that are uh, uninsured. About one million New Jersey residents cannot afford health insurance. Senator Vitale's plan is to make health care affordable and accessible for everyone by 2011. Every year more people become uninsured because they lose their insurance through their employer because it's too expensive for the employer to keep it. Uh, or they graduate from college or from school and they get into the workforce and they can't find insurance that's affordable. So this is really a product for them. Senator Vitale's plan consists of two steps. First, starting with children and their parents and then moving to everyone else. We, we are prioritizing it because we know it's going to be, it's going to cost money, it's going to take time to get this operationalized. Then you want to give people time to, you know, get used to doing it, of course, and understand that it exists. And also to pay for it, too, because it's going to take time. We're doing it as a state only. You know, it's not a federal thing. Senator Vitale is determined to fight for universal health care in the state of New Jersey. He hopes that a Democratic president will be elected into office to help implement this plan nationally. Now that businesses are being affected, that they can't afford the cost of their insurance for their employees or for themselves, now they're joining the, the chorus of people who say we need reform. And they're right, but it's kind of come to this critical mass. It's almost like global warming. It was happening for so long, and now we see the ice caps melting. And it's the same thing with health care. Once the night concluded, we were able to talk to students and get their opinions regarding the plan for universal health care. They seem to have mixed views. Generally, I'm opposed to universal health care for numerous reasons, but I think I have to respect Senator Vitale for coming here and, you know, explaining his plan and proposing, actually, you know, trying to have a substantive policy discussion on this issue. Yes, I think this plan is beneficial to society. The only thing we need to do is we're, we're seeing a, a few states considering plans such as this. We, we now need to see the federal government consider plans a universal health care plan such as this one. The senator said that the cost of insurance will be dependent on the family or individual's income. It will be on a sliding scale so that it will be fair for everyone. This has been Gina Grasser reporting for Channel 20 News at Ryder. For more information regarding Senator Vitale's health plan can be found at www.njsendums.com. Chelsea Clinton was campaigning in Pennsylvania this weekend before the state's primary election. Nicholas Balsey reports. Chelsea Clinton charged up her mother's campaign volunteers at the Montgomery County Hillary for President headquarters in Norristown, Pennsylvania over the weekend. I do fundamentally believe that if we just keep reaching out to people and we ask people to put this context in the election of their own lives and what really matters to them, and we share the reasons why each of us is supporting my mom so enthusiastically. Yes! Yeah. 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 We'll have a strong win on Tuesday, but we just got to keep working hard. Yeah. Yeah. Two days before the Pennsylvania primary, the Clinton campaign is trying to garner as much grassroots support as possible to challenge Senator Barack Obama. They sent Chelsea door to door canvassing for her mom in a neighborhood on the west side of Norristown. Many residents welcomed Chelsea with open arms by inviting her into their home when she greeted them at the door. Well, it's definitely good at be at Pennsylvania being, you know, maybe one of the swing votes that Hillary might need uh, for the election. So, you know, as much as much press as she can get in Pennsylvania, the better. After visiting neighbors, she made a stop at the local zoo telling residents, quote, make sure you vote for my mom. Hillary's policies were not specifically addressed, but residents seem receptive to the former first daughter's visit. It is grassroots. That's what, where they have to be, talking to people, being in the community. And we are part of the community and, you know, our uh, conservation efforts, a lot of people come here. So it will be great for our people that had the opportunity to meet her here. And that will help uh, conservation at the end. In Norristown, Pennsylvania, I'm Nicholas Fallacy, News at Ryder. The most important political day so far this year finally came for Pennsylvanians. The Keystone State primary elections were held this past Tuesday, April 22nd. Steph Chartel was in her hometown to catch up on the action. On April 22nd, I made the hour and a half journey to my home in Pennsylvania so I could exercise my right. I made my vote count at the Long Swamp Township building. 
nestled amongst the many cornfields in Berks County. As the clock struck 6 p.m., the election officials at the township building had announced their 500th voter of the day. Pennsylvania's polls were to close at 8, allowing two more hours for individuals to have their voice heard. As far as the turnout, we see a lot more Democrats coming out. Um, normally, there are many more Republicans at this polling place, uh, but we see today the turnout has been larger than usual for a primary, and they have been more Democrats than usual. There are many possible explanations for the great change in the amount of Long Swamp Township residents who voted. An obvious one being that this race is presidential among others. Yet, the roots of such a turnout could be traced to the fact that since January, 218,923 new voters have registered in the state. Ms. Jane Bedell also noted on the significant change in the Democratic partakes in the event. This can very well be. Four of the new voters who had registered, an immense 70 percent of them registered Democratic. The change in Long Swamp Township's numbers indubitably existed among the remaining counties in Pennsylvania. The Democratic Party led the Republican Party with 74 percent of Wednesday's total votes. Senator Hillary Clinton conquered the state's primary with 1,260,060 votes, about 200,000 more than Senator Barack Obama making Pennsylvania her 17th victory. In her victory speech, Clinton said, quote, I carry with me the dreams of people like you all across our country, people who embrace hard work and opportunity, who never waver in the face of adversity, who stand for what you believe and never stop believing in the promise of America, end quote. Bill Hennessy, also of Long Swamp Township, wanted to share with Riders Campus the importance of having your voice heard. Well, the basic message is to get off your butt and come out and vote. It's a little too late to vote today, but, you know, just pay a little bit of attention and plan on voting in November. This has been Steph Chartel for Channel 20 News at Rider. The candidates now must continue on the road to the White House as they each hope to dominate Indiana and North Carolina, both of which have their primary elections on Tuesday, May 6th. With finals commencing soon, Senate held their last meeting on the semesters this past Tuesday. Sean Rennie was there and has more. With the spring semester coming to a close, parents joined senators for a special luncheon held in the Daly's boardroom. Following their meal, senators discussed the latest update from students about a possible fall break. We are in the process of working with uh, the administration, Dean Campbell, maybe making a few changes and tweaks to the proposed break, at which time, once we figure those changes out, I will try to communicate the best I can with you whether it's through email or personal contact about any changes to it. But um, right now, like I said, there is some opposition to it. After all business was completed, the outgoing administration swore in the newly elected members into their respective positions. I fulfill the duties as president. To the best of my ability, so help me God. To the best of my ability, so help me God. Former President Laura Vendetta talked about what she believed was the best thing Senate accomplished during her administration. I think just our involvement with the alcohol task force, um, our ability to institute the Safe Rides program, I think also that our just our feedback was very important and imperative uh, to the university moving forward in what their, their plan and with the um, task force. So. Vice President John Shebra believe Senate will continue to do great things for students next year. Well, I mean, I've got to be honest, we've got a lot to live up to. Brian Walker did a great job this year, uh, instituted the committee system, got a lot accomplished, uh, passed numerous clubs and uh, tackled some really difficult issues. Uh, but there are just as many difficult issues that are going to be facing us next year. Um, I really am looking forward to working with all the senators, all the clubs and organizations on campus to uh, just uh, accomplish just as much and really focus the Senate to take on the issues that affect students. This has been Sean Rainey, Channel 20, News at Rider. Senate will have a new advisor come this fall. Dave Keenan will take over Cassie Iacovelli as she's planning to retire. There is a lot going on around campus as yet another academic year draws to a close. I recently had the chance to stop in at one of the more popular locations on campus. Rider Student Entertainment Council decided to wrap up the year with a glowing event here at the pub. We have uh, 
dance glow party. It has glow paint, glow sticks, um, free t-shirts for the first 50 guests. It's, we're going to have a dance contest. It's really hot. Some of the event's planners told us how they came up with the idea. We just pretty much were like, you know, what hasn't really been done on campus? And we're like, you know what? This is really interesting. You know, we just happened to be looking through like a catalog one day. We're like, you know what? This is really cool. Let's try it. And apparently, it's working. <laughs> Students told us what made the event interesting. It's just different. That's basically it. It's, it's the same thing. Music's playing, but you know, you can have a little more fun with your shirt, you know, put some things on, have a little more fun, throw some paint on somebody. Well, I mean, especially at the pub. I know I've come to the pub before, and um, they don't really have anything special like this. You know, it's just kind of like the same old thing every night, and I thought this was a little different. It's cool. It's like the whole glow thing, like that it's in the dark. Like, that's not something we usually do. SEC seemed to be happy with the turnout. Oh, my God. Shocked. Like we thought it was gonna be good, but not like this. This is awesome. We were expecting a lot less people because you know we were like stressing for people. We're worried because it's like the last week of classes. We didn't think people were gonna come out. With the spring semester coming to a close, we only have next fall to look forward to with more SEC events. From the Ryder University Pub, this is Kelly Dixon, Channel 20, News at Ryder. Check the Ryder University website for the pub schedule during final exams. As the school year comes to an end, Club members are preparing for the upcoming year. I was in attendance for this year's Transition Day in the BLC. Today in the Kavala Room, students gather to partake in Transition Day. This is the day for clubs and organizations to recognize their new executive board and members. Transition Day is an annual event that happens. It's kind of the conclusion of the school year when it comes to clubs and organizations as well as the start of the new, uh, new year. Um, it's when the outgoing student leaders come together with the newly elected student leaders as well as all the advisors to talk about some logistics about club uh, management as well as to receive their budgets and just get together and start comparing stories about what events work for them and what events aren't as successful. During the transition, students were given advice on how to make their clubs and organizations more organized and successful for the upcoming year. You want to meet as an executive board uh, before you meet your general board or your general members. Um, that way you can plan your meetings, you can plan your activities as an executive board and your whole executive board is on the same page before you walk into a meeting with your general members. Um, it's kind of hectic when you walk in and one executive member saying this and the other saying that. It's better if you're all on the same page. So I'd recommend meeting with your executive board before you walk into um, the general meeting. Nick Barbati explains why Transition Day is beneficial to new executive board members. I think it's really beneficial. I mean, we have uh, Transition Day and Awareness Day, and, these are the, and everything in between are, is kind of the stage in which clubs and orgs are supposed to run on their own. Um, but in the meantime, these are bookend events that are really important to uh, helping teach our clubs and organizations how to um, recruit and retain members, as well as transition over documents and other uh, information onto newly elected officers so that their clubs can stay as strong as they were this previous year. Time can only tell if the new executive board members will be able to handle the challenges in the fall. From the Kavala Room, this is Garrett Williams, Channel 20, News at Ryder. The News at Ryder wishes all the new exec board members the best of luck in the new position. And we're out of time. For everyone here at the News at Ryder, we'd like to wish everyone a safe and happy summer. Congratulations and good luck to all of you seniors too. For the News at Ryder, I'm Garrett Williams. And I'm Kelly Dixon.